Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to your new Zor Education. Uh, we continue talking about random variables. Um, as usual, I recommend to um, watch this particular lecture from unizor.com website um, rather than on YouTube or, or any other because um, the unizor.com contains also notes for this particular lecture, which is definitely um, a, a, a very useful text to review before or after this particular lecture. Okay, random variables. Let me first of all remind that we are talking about random variables which take certain finite number of values with certain probabilities. So, generally speaking, we are talking about random variable, I use the Greek letter um, C, uh, which has certain values, finite number of real values, with certain probabilities of each value. Now, there are other random variables. There are random variables which take infinite but countable number of values. There are um, random variables which take um, uncountable number of, infinite and uncountable number of values. We are not talking about these right now. During this course, these are the only type of random variables we will be talking about. It's simpler and it gives you a nice introduction into theory of probabilities. Now, this number can be, well, rather large, I would say. In some cases it's only two, like win or lose. In some other cases it might be, for instance, you are rolling the dice and there are six different values. Sometimes you are rolling two dice and that's six times six, which is 36 different values with different probabilities. So, how can we characterize the um, random variable um, if we would like to have a feel um, about certain values which it can take. Well, the full description is basically exactly what I just um, wrote here. These are all the values which it, it, it can take and these are the probabilities. And the probabilities basically characterize certain frequencies. This or that particular value occurs if we conduct certain experiment again and again and again and our random variable takes certain values out of this set. But again, I was saying that it might be too many of these values, and still, even if there are not too many, you would like something which is intuitively helping you to, um, well, predict maybe the general behavior of the variable, of the random variable. Um, okay, how can it be done? We have introduced one particular characteristic of the random variable, its expected value. Now, expected value in this particular case is a sum of ever. It's basically a weighted average of different values where the weights are probabilities. So this is definitely a very good characteristic which helps you to basically understand, okay, my values can be God knows where, but this is something which they are, on average, um, will be concentrated. It's, it's a good measure. Now, is it sufficient measure to realize something like, okay, what's the risk, for instance, of playing the game where these are outcomes? Well, let's consider two examples. We are um, flipping the coin. So we have either heads or tails with the probabilities of one half each. Now, let's say I'm playing for one dollar. So I'm betting on, let's say, heads. So the probability of winning one dollar is one half, right? So my x1 is equal to one and my p1 is equal to one half. Now, if I lose and the probability of getting tail is also one half, I lose, I lose a dollar, so it's minus one here, 
and the probability is also one half. So this is my full description of the random variable. But again, I would like to have not these values with these probabilities because they might be numerous. I would like a single concise characteristic or two characteristics which basically describe the behavior. All right, so my average, weighted average in this particular case, my um, expectation of this particular variable is one with a value with a weight of one half and minus one with a value of one half, which is equal to zero. Great. So if I'm playing this game for a very, very long time, well, I can expect that on average per game, I would neither win or lose. It will be around zero. So if I will take all my winning for 1,000 games and divide it by 1,000, I will get a number close to zero. All right, fine. Now, let's consider exactly the same game, but instead of betting one dollar, I'm betting a hundred dollars. Now, again, I can calculate my expectation. It will be one hundred times one half plus minus one hundred times one half, which is also equal to zero. So it looks like my expectation is exactly the same whether I'm betting a dollar in this game or one hundred dollars. But are these games equivalent? I mean, is this expectation being zero really enough? Well, it depends on how much money you have. Let's say you have a hundred dollars. Would you play the first game for a dollar? Well, why not? I mean, you have a hundred dollars, so you can bet a dollar here, a dollar there. At the end of the day, you will find out that, okay, you maybe lose or you, you, you win like ten dollars altogether. All now, what if you have a hundred dollars and the game is 100? Well, you can lose the first game and the game is over, right? So the risk itself is significantly greater for you if you are playing this game. So how can you evaluate the risk? Well, there are many different ways to approach this problem. What is risk in this particular case? Now, analogous to this, maybe you are measuring certain, let's say, a temperature um, of a, a group of people uh, in, in, in a room. Let's say you have 50 people in a room, you're measuring their temperature. Well, obviously there is something which is considered to be normal and everybody will have more or less close to this normal temperature, but deviated left or right, up or down, or something like this. Now, most likely, if all people are considered normal, they're not sick people, they're all normal people, you would consider that their temperature would be something which is uh, in medicine considered to be a normal temperature, whatever it is. However, temperatures will be different. So my question is, can you evaluate how different or, or how, um, how much deviation from this normal temperature you can observe? Well, you will get different data, obviously, but again, how much they divert from, from this normal temperature. So, a variation of this obviously needs certain other um, except expectation. Expectation would be like zero in this case or a normal temperature in the case of a temperature. Um, but, but I would like to know what's the uh, diversity around this particular um, ex expected value. And that depends actually on the game. Like in this particular case, diversity can be significant, right? It's either minus 100 or plus 100. It's a big diversity versus the previous game when the, a, a bet is only zero. So what's the measure which can help me to evaluate this diversity so it will help me to evaluate my risk or help me to evaluate the interval where I can expect the data, actual expectation, you know, probability is all about predictions, right? So you, you really should predict something um, like this. All right, so here is what I suggest you to do. Um, in case of um, expectation, you're using weighted average 
of the values with the weights probabilities being the probabilities now to evaluate the diversity around this uh, 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 expectation, uh, around this expected value, I can actually make an av uh, the weighted average of the differences from different values from the expectation. So the difference in the first game is either 1 minus 0 or minus 1 minus 0. So the difference is 1 or minus 1. But I don't really need this signed difference. I need just an absolute value of the difference. So my one of the ways to um, evaluate this would be to have an absolute value of a difference between the value and the expectation. Or since absolute value is not such a good function in, in mathematics, um, uh, mathematicians prefer smooth curves. Now, um, absolute value has an angle, if you remember, on the graph. Uh, um, there is a better way, which is actually a parabola, uh, which looks like this. It's a smooth curve. So people prefer to, to use, instead of an absolute value of a difference between the value of the uh, random variable and its expectation, they prefer to use the square of this difference. That makes it positive, right? So, since we are talking about deviation, well, we will use a square of a difference. Now, square of a difference between the first value Okay, I will put here for my game had I win one, tails, I lose one, expectation is equal to zero. Now, the difference are uh, from one minus zero square, that's the deviation of this first value my um, random variable takes. And I will use the averaging using the probability as a weight. Now, in another case, if my, if my random variable takes minus 1, I will subtract from minus 1 the expectation and um, square it, and with its own uh, probability. And this is what, what is called a variance. A variance of my random variable. Now, what's the variance in this particular case? It's 1 times 1 half, this is 1 times 1 half, so in this particular case, variance equals to 1. Now, what if instead of 1, I have 100? Well, I have 100 minus 0, square, which is 10,000, times 1 half, and this is minus 100 minus 0, square, which is also 10,000 divided by 2, so I have 10,000. See the difference? So the first game gives me the variance 1, which is actually a weighted average of squares of the distances between different values my random variable takes and the expectation. And the second case, the variance is significantly greater. So variance is a good measure of the um, I would say average deviation of the uh, random variable from its expected value. And average in terms of this is a weighted average with probabilities being the weights. Okay, now what's good about this? It's a good measure. What's bad about this? It's a square. You see, if I'm measuring, for instance, a temperature and I'm talking about deviation from some expected value, which is the normal temperature. Well, I would like the deviation be, to be, um, well, temperature, right? Uh, not temperature square. Uh, same thing with, with in this particular case. Uh, I would like my deviation from uh, uh, an amount of zero to be amount in dollars, not dollars square. So, there is another characteristic which is very much um, dependent on the, vari uh, on the variance, which is standard deviation. Standard deviation, which is actually a square root of 
variance. Now, having this square root actually brings the dimension of this uh, with this particular characteristic down to the same dimension my uh, random variable takes. If it's dollars, then the standard deviation is dollars, not dollar square. If it's temperature, it's temperature, not temperature square. So this is actually more often used uh, used uh, characteristic of the of the random variables. Um, variance actually does have its own advantages. Um, let me just very simply state it without the proof. I will prove it in some other lecture that if you have two independent random variables, and we will talk about what is an independent variable, um, then the variance of their sum is equal to sum of their variances, which is not the case with the standard deviation. So variance has a very important advantage. It's an additive function, like expectation. Remember, expectation of sum of two different random variables equals to sum of their expectations. Well, in variances, it's the same, but only for independent uh, random variables. For standard deviation, it's not the same at all, uh, but since it's a very directly dependent on the variance. So first we calculate the variance of the sum, and then we use the square root to get the standard deviation. All right, now I think we are completely uh, ready for general description of what is actually uh, a variance and deviation in the general case, which is this one. This is the general case. So let's say this is equal to A. So what is my variance? Variance is basically, as I was saying, it's a weighted average of squares of the differences between the values and the uh, So it's x1 minus a square, a being the um, expectation, times the weight, which is its uh, probability, plus x2 minus a square, b2, plus etc., plus xn minus a square, bn. Well, that's the definition. That's it. End of story. So we are averaging with weights equals to probabilities the deviation of the um, values from the expectation squared and from here this is square root of variance of c well that's it definition very simple i was trying to explain this definition before on a particular example and uh, now this is, it, this is a general definition. And now let me exemplify it in uh, one other simple case, um, which is uh, rolling of a dice, all right? So when I roll the dice, I have six different values. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with probabilities of 1, 6 each. Okay, question number one, what's the expect expected value? Well, the expectation is a weighted average of these values with weights equal to probabilities, right? So it's 1 times 1, 6, plus 2 times 1, 6, plus... 3 times 1, 6, plus 4 times 1, 6, plus 5, 1, 6, plus 6 times 1, 6, which is equal to 1 plus 2, 3, plus 3, 6, plus 4, 10, plus 5, 15, plus 6, 21, 6, which is 3 and 1 half, 3 and a half. Okay, this is my expectation. Now, by the way, graphically, if I have this uh, as a um, axis, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, 3.5 is right in the middle, which is natural for equally distributed probabilities. So all these points have the same weight. Therefore, their weighted average 
should be in the middle. So that's normal. Now, let's talk about their, the variance of this particular variable. Okay, the variance is equal to weighted average of squares of the distances from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. So the difference, so this is 3.5. Difference between 1 and 3.5, so it's 1 minus 3.5 square times 1 6. Then same thing for 2 minus 3.5 square 1 6 plus 3 minus 3.5 square times 1 6 plus 4 minus 3.5 square 1 6 5 minus 3.5 square 1 6 and 6 minus 3.5 square times 1 6 equals 2 I have already calculated it beforehand it's 2.9 so this is my variance. Now, what's my standard deviation of this variable, random variable? That's square root of 2.9, which is 1.7. By the way, this is approximate value. Okay? So, the standard deviation of these numbers from the middle point, from their expectation, is 1.7, which is, you know, something like from here, it's one and a half, something like here. So this is uh, uh, average, this is expectation minus standard deviation, this is plus standard deviation. Now, obviously, not all of these values are exactly positioned on the standard deviation. This is just an average difference between value and. So this is some kind of a middle point weighted um, average uh, of the distance between this and this. Now, instead of this definition, let me just repeat, I can, instead of squaring the distance, I can use absolute value. In, in all these cases, it would be a different number, close to this one, but still different. And, um, and this defined um, variance or standard deviation would not adhere to this nice additive uh, property which I was talking uh, about before. So, basically that's it. Um, uh, I will certainly consider certain problems related to this. And uh, I do encourage you to uh, basically read the notes for the lecture. It's always good after you listen to the lecture. It's always good to read the notes on unizor.com. Thank you very much and good luck.